So we are entering into the fifth principle this week, which is going. And I guarantee you in the room right now, out of all the principles, this is the biggest struggle for most of you. So far in the Red Letter Challenge, we spent some time being with Jesus and instilling spiritual disciplines in our life. We spent some time receiving God's forgiveness and then giving that away. We spent some time serving our neighbors and our community, and we've even been generous towards those in need. But there is absolutely a time that God calls us to go and to speak and tell people of who He is and what He's done. And I think the reason most people think this is daunting and scary is quite simply because we think we need to know everything about everything about Jesus before we go and speak about Him, like we need a doctoral dissertation of who He is. But what God never asks you to do is to understand Him completely. He asks you to trust Him completely. Is it important we know a lot about our God? Absolutely, but I believe you can go today and help people know who Jesus is. And, and, and there's something that Jesus tells us. It's actually His very last words that I think is gonna give us a clue as to what Jesus is looking for when we're gonna go out and speak about what He's done. And it's from Acts chapter one, verse eight. Jesus says, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And that verse gives me a lot of comfort because it tells me two things. Number one, it tells me that I don't go alone. God's power, His Holy Spirit goes with me and He can speak through me. But actually the part that I want to clue in on that's even more important for this is that we are His witnesses. And that's what Jesus asks us to be. And when I think of witnesses, I think of our judicial system, I think of the courtroom. And so today you are joining me at a historic courthouse in Orlando, Florida. Jesus calls us his witnesses. And I wanna, I wanna show you how easy, but yet how powerful it can be to be a witness for Christ. And I don't know if you've noticed over the last couple decades, there's been a lot of chatter about the reliability of eyewitness accounts in the courtroom. In fact, they've done study after study and they've found that jurors place more weight on eyewitness accounts than they do things like polygraph tests and even finger printing and handwriting evidence and kind of nuts in one sense that someone can just give their version of the story and jurors will put more credence on that than they will some factual tests and things. I was reading a story not long ago about a man from California. His name was Cash Register. No joke, Cash with a K Register. And he was wrongfully convicted of a murder that he didn't commit and had to spend a life in prison was his sentence. And there was very weak physical evidence in this case, but everything hinged on this chair right here, because this is where the eyewitness account gives their story. And in this particular case, and you can read through the articles if you'd like, there was a 19 year old woman that shared her version of the story and she lived nearby. And she talked about the things that happened and, and pretty much everything changed based on her story. And he was largely convicted because of this eyewitness account. He spent decades in prison and he kept continuing to proclaim his innocence. He had 11 parole hearings and every time he would declare his innocence, which isn't so good if you're trying to get out to still say you're innocent. And so it had been decades and this woman looked up his name in the system and saw that he was still in prison suffering. This woman just happened to be the sister of the woman that was 19 years old giving the eyewitness account. And she always had suspicion that her sister was lying and not really telling the whole truth. And so as she was looking at the case and the facts, she got it reopened and was able to give her eyewitness account. And 34 years after he went to prison for murder, he was freed. And what's crazy about this story is from one woman's account, he was convicted, and from another woman's eyewitness account, he was freed. It goes to show you the power of the story and your witness and your testimony can have. The Bible talks in Romans 3 verse 10 that there is not a single one of us that's righteous. All of us are guilty, that we're all sinners and we're all falling short, and that the punishment for our sins, the wages of our sin is death. And so spiritually speaking, we are all walking around with these death sentences hanging above our heads. And that's the bad news, and that's what we walk around with. But the good news is that Jesus did not come to condemn the world. Jesus came to save the world. And Jesus took our punishment, our penalty, all the wages of all the sins that we've committed, and He went to the cross, and He died for you and me. That blood that He shed on the cross was blood shed for you and for me. So much so that now when, when 
God the Father looks at us, and the Bible talks about how He's our judge, that when He looks at us, He doesn't look at us through the lens of what we've done, the bad things that we've said or thought. Instead, He looks at us through the eyes of Jesus Christ and declares you and declares me not guilty, innocent, free. That death sentence has been removed. And now that your death sentence has been removed, Jesus invites you into a life where we get to go remove other people's death sentences. In fact, I love the way Revelation 12, 11 puts it. It says to overcome the enemy, in other words, to get rid of that death sentence, this is what it says. We overcome it by the blood of the Lamb. That's the blood that Jesus has already spilled for us. And check this out. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You who have been freed by God, you who have been rescued by God, have a story to tell of what Jesus has done for you. And that's all the witnesses. It's saying, hey, this is who Jesus is, this is what he's done, and this is the difference that it's made in my life. Your story can help remove other people's death sentences. You who have been freed, I pray you would go help free others with the Holy Spirit working inside of you.